All right, guys, this one's a bit of a different video because this has come uh, suggested by Garrod G Gamer. So I just want to thank you, Garrod, for suggesting this video of boiling dry ice. Now, we've done plenty of videos uh, with dry ice in the past, and you might want to check out our most recent one where we burn some thermite on top of dry ice. So you might want to check out what happens in that video. Just tap the link right here. Now, we always aim to give our viewers what we want and I do read all the comments, I respond to a lot of them. So I just wanna thank you guys for you know commenting, liking and sharing. You know, don't forget to head over to the Instagram at Ultimate Learning, check us out there. We've got some cool experiments up there as well. But first of all, let's just get into what dry ice actually is. Well, dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. And the thing that makes uh, dry ice really cool and, uh, and the reason why a lot of people like to watch it is because dry ice doesn't actually melt. It does a physical process which we call sublimation. Now when dry ice sublimes, that just means it turns straight from the solid into the gaseous state. So it skips out liquid. Now this makes dry ice really useful because we can use dry ice when packaging uh, frozen foods and sending them uh, for long distances and you won't get, be left with this puddle in your containers. Now dry ice is really really cold it's about minus 78 degrees celsius which is about minus 109 fahrenheit for all my american viewers so tap like if you like that I'm acknowledging you guys. Um, and remember though, everything you're gonna to see today, this isn't a chemical reaction. There are no change um, in substance, but what we're gonna see is a change in state. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. So let's see what happens guys when we try to boil some dry ice. All right guys, so before we actually boil the dry ice, I just wanted to have a think about like, how does surface area affect the rate of sublimation? So if you take a look here, right? If you take a look here, I've got some dry ice that I've chopped up into like some small cubes. So we would say that this has a large surface area. More of the dry ice would be exposed to the hot water. Whereas here, I've got a much bigger block of dry ice. Now they have the same mass, but let's just see which is better to sublime in water. Take a look. I think that's a winner look you can definitely see here <laughs> this is just puffing out a lot of a lot of the uh, carbon dioxide here so when we have a larger surface area look you can just see all those little puffs just coming out whereas the big block it is sublimating but not as violently as the large surface area so I think we'll stick to the large surface area of carbon dioxide for today Alright then guys, so we've just seen that the larger the surface area of the dry ice, the more violently it sublimates, or the faster it sublimates. And that's because more of the dry ice is exposed to the warm water, so it can sublimate a lot faster. But what about the temperature of the water? What about if we were to use really hot water and fridge cooled water? Would that make a difference to the rate of sublimation? only one way to find out okay then guys so here we've got some hot water out of the kettle and we've got some cold water that's come out of the fridge right here let's see which one um, sublimates the co2 better man it's definitely the hot water so guys, just remember, if you want to see the best effects ever from uh, dry ice, you have to make sure that you use hot or warm water and the dry ice needs to have as large a surface area as possible. All right then guys, so it's almost time for the big finale. What we're gonna do, I've got a pot of water here. I'm gonna set it to boil. Once it's boiling, we're gonna chuck about two kilograms of dry ice and see what happens.
Alright then guys, our water's boiled, dry ice is in the bowl, there's only one thing left, add them together. Oh, that is amazing. Yo, Garrod. <laughs> Garrod, thanks for that. This is big up to you, Garrod. Um, there was that much carbon dioxide produced. It's extinguished the, uh, the flame on the gas hob. So you've got two lessons there. Carbon dioxide can also be used as a fire extinguisher. Garrod, this is for you. Alright then guys, well there's only one thing left to do, I've got about 8 kilograms of dry ice left, let's take a look. Ultimate learning guys! Subscribe! Oh Look at that, I can't even see my feet. <laughs> Alright then guys, so I hope you've enjoyed that video. And remember that if you're going to play with dry ice at home, make sure that you do it in a well-ventilated room. I had the windows open, I had my front and back door open, just so that the carbon dioxide could escape. It can be dangerous if uh, you're in a room and carbon dioxide builds up because it could lead to asphyxiation and we don't want that. But what have we learned in this lesson? Well, first of all, we've learned that dry ice sublimates and that sublimation is a physical change. And if we want to speed up the rate of sublimation, then we need to increase the surface area of our dry ice. And we also need to increase the temperature of the water um, that the carbon dioxide sublimates in. All right, guys, see you again soon. Yo guys, I've got to show you this. Just as I was getting ready for the next experiment, I was heating up the kettle and I thought, what would happen if I dropped some dry ice straight into the kettle? Take a look at this, this is, this is sick, take a look. <laughs>